All right, in this video, I'm going to be doing some radius and interval of convergence problems. Okay, this is really, it's the second half of BC homework 11.4, but it's all radius and interval of convergence for power series. So we're going to start by, you know, running the ratio test on this thing. So we're going to consider the limit as n approaches infinity of a n plus 1 divided by a n's absolute value. Now, I recommend always starting with this because on the free response portion of the AP exam, when they ask you to find the radius or interval of convergence, specifically the interval of convergence for a power series, it's usually worth like four points. It's, it's you know, multiple, multiple choice questions, right? So we want to make sure we're doing it right and collecting all the points that we can. And the first point is sets up limit of ratio. But you got to do it right, you know what I mean? But if we do this, then we're kind of setting up expressing interest in the limit of the ratio, and we can check that first point. So I always start with that when I'm running the ratio test. And we know we want to run the ratio test because it says find the interval of convergence. Okay, that's always going to be a ratio test scenario. Okay, so that's enough of that. I'm only going to say that the once. This is going to be x minus 5, plug in n plus 1, where we saw n. and then divide by the terms of the original. All right, now I'm going to be able to cancel some stuff off. Okay, I'll cancel off all but one of the factors of x minus 5, all but one of the 2's, and then there's nothing I can do with n over n plus 1. So I'm going to hold that off to the side because I know that's going to go to 1. So this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, on one hand I'm going to put this n times n minus 1 off to the side, but what am I left with? An x minus 5 divided by 2. Okay. I know that as n goes to infinity, this fraction goes to 1, and so this is equal to, this limit is the absolute value of x minus 5 divided by 2. Okay, I know I need that to be less than 1 for the series to converge absolutely, which gives me the interior of my interval of convergence. So that's not going to be Okay, so now I know that negative 1 is less than x minus 5 over 2, which is less than 1. I also know that the radius is going to be equal to 2. So I might just write that there to make sure everyone knows. I know the radius is 2. So negative 2 less than x minus 5 less than 2. Add 5 to everything. So it's negative 3 to 7. Now I need to test negative 3 and 7 and determine if those are places where the power series is going to converge. So x equals negative 3. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to plug in negative 3. What? Yeah, that's got to be, I was like, negative 8 to the n, that doesn't make any sense at all. Negative 2 plus 5 is not equal to negative 3. Okay, pardon me. That, was, that one was a little rough. Oh, I got right out on my finger. Goodness. Okay, it's not coming off either. All right, there we go. 3 to 7. X equals positive 3. Now we're, yeah, that makes more sense because 3 minus 5, it always wants to be the kind of the same as that number at the end points. So I've got negative 2 to the n over 2 to the n times n. Okay from 1 to infinity. Well, that's the same as the sum from 1 to infinity. The 2 to the n, I could write negative 2 to the n as negative 1 to the n times 2 to the n, and that could cancel the 2 to the n's. And that would be negative 1 to the n over n, which converges because it's the alternating harmonic series. So I know that's going to be less than or equal to there. And then when x is equal to 7, I'm going to say, all right, I'm taking the sum from 1 to infinity of 7 minus 5 is 2 to the n divided by n times 2 to the n. Okay, that's 1 over n. That's the you know the harmonic series diverges. So it's negative 3 to 7, including negative 3, but not including 7. Okay, That was the radius and interval of convergence for that power series. All right, we're going to do the same thing again. All right. 
The ones where you have a 2 in as the exponent, those can be a little tricky. So I'm going to make sure to be careful when I'm going through that. Okay, so I'm going to set up the limit of the ratio. That's going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, okay, when I'm taking the absolute value, I'm going to lose that negative one to the n. Okay, so I'm just not going to even include that. x to the, when I plug it in plus 1, I'll get 2n plus 2 plus, another one is x to the 2n plus 3. Divided by 2 times n plus 1 is 2n plus 2 plus another 3 is 2n plus 5. Okay, divided by the terms of the original, x to the 2n plus 1. All right, except, oh, that's that's kind of a shame. Um, I, they should have been a 2 to the n instead of a 2 in there, because that, about it'll be fine. I'll find another one that has a double exponent to give you. I think there was one in, like, in the past 10 years or so in the free response for CalVC, there's been one. And we'll look at that in class, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to start canceling stuff off, and I'll be left with two powers of x because of the difference between 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 3. I'm not going to have anything else. I probably should have just left that as x squared. But then over here, the things with n on them, 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 5. As n goes to infinity, that's going to, uh, that's going to 1. And so I've got really that this limit equals the absolute value of x squared, which is the same as x squared. So I've just got x squared, and I know that needs to be less than 1. And that still gives me negative 1 to 1. Okay. Now, if this was x squared over 4 was less than 1, that's going to be a little more interesting what we would have to do there. But that's that will deal with that in a different example, a different time. Okay, so now I know that the radius equals one. Okay, yeah, I can fit that there. Okay. And the interval, I'm gonna have to check negative one and one. Okay, so yeah, I've got enough room over here. Where x equals negative one, I've got negative one to the n, negative one to the two n plus one. Okay, negative one to the two n plus one. If, if you think about it, if n is an integer, then two n plus one is always odd because two n is always even, okay? So I'm always taking negative one to an odd power. So I've got that negative one there, and I'm not even gonna put two n plus one just to remind myself that that's always equal to negative one, divided by two n plus three. Okay, this would converge by the alternating series test. And maybe I will put in the justification here for that one. Okay, so this one converges. Usually they give you a lot more room than this to work. I think I just was really trying to squeeze this onto two sheets of paper. This one converges. The reasoning being the alternating series test, and I know I can't fade it in with that type of pen. So I'm going to say the terms are alternating. Okay. The absolute value of the terms, which is 1 over 2n plus 3, is decreasing. And the limit as n approaches infinity of the terms, so that's negative 1 to the n times negative 1 divided by 2n plus 3. That limit is equal to 0. Therefore, it converges. Okay, that's the alternating series test. Then over here, I'm going to check x equals positive 1. And it's going to be the exact same thing, okay? Because um, it's going to be negative 1 to the n times 1 to the 2n plus 1. 1 to any power is going to be 1. And then I'm going to divide by 2n plus 3. This one converges. Same reasons. Okay, because of the alternating series test. All right. 
Number 10, find the values of x for which the series below converges. This is a geometric series. Stuff to the nth power, that makes it geometric. So I know that I just take that stuff and I set it between negative one and one. So this is going to be negative one is less than two over x squared plus one, which is less than positive one. This is very irregular like algebra. So I'm gonna look and see how I approached this last year and make sure I'm doing it the most uh, clear and efficient way. All right, well, it's, it's going to be not as bad as you would think, I don't think. We're going to multiply all three sides by x squared plus 1, which is going to be completely fine because x squared plus 1 is always positive. Right? We're not going to have to worry about the direction of the inequalities. So I've got negative x squared minus 1 is less than 2, which is less than x squared plus 1. Now we're going to deal with each of these inequalities separately. This one, if x squared plus 1 is a positive number, then negative x squared minus 1 has to be a negative number. And a negative number is always less than 2. So this inequality is vacuous. It's not telling me any new information that I didn't already know. That like a negative number is less than 2? All right, great. I already knew that. Okay, 2 is less than x squared plus 1. That's something I can work with. Okay, now. Okay, and now I'm going to subtract. And I get x squared is bigger than 1. Okay, well, that's like x squared minus 1 is bigger than 0. Okay, well, x squared minus 1 is x plus 1, x minus 1, um, or x minus 1, x plus 1, the way I drew it. And I know that that's going to be positive out here. And so that means that x is bigger than 1 or more negative than negative 1. Let's see what happens when x is equal to 1. Um, ah, when x is equal to 1, I've got 2 over 2. I got 1 to the n, and that diverges. When x is negative 1, same story. 2 over 2 to the nth power. I'm just adding a bunch of 1s together, and that's going to diverge. Okay, And you might be thinking, wait a second, dude. Like This is two separate pieces. And you told me that the interval of convergence for a power series would be connected in class. And it's true. I did say that in the notes. Um, but this is not a power series, right? It's got x squared and the x powers in the denominator. That a power series has, you know, it's like an infinite degree polynomial where we've got, you know, successive powers of x in the numerator. So this is just something really weird. I don't know if I made this up or where this came from, but this is, you know, not something you're probably going to see again in this class. Okay, determine the interval of convergence for the power series. Okay. Um, oh. Both of these will be interesting because I did mention in the notes that a the radius can be zero or infinity. And so I think that that will be happening with each of these. Yes, I think I see that. All right, so I'm going to do the ratio test on this. And I'm going to be interested in the limit as n approaches infinity of a n plus 1 divided by a n's absolute value. That's going to be the limit of e to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, divided by n plus 1 factorial, divided by the terms of the original. Okay, I go to cross stuff off, all but one of the powers, all but one of the powers here, n factorial or is n plus 1 times n factorial, so I can cancel that off and just be left with an x over an e times x over n plus 1. Okay. E x divided by n plus 1, the absolute value of that. And I'm thinking, what values of x make that limit less than 1? Well, this limit's always equal to 0, because e and x are going to be fixed. You know, For a particular value of x, e times x is fixed, whereas n plus 1 is allowed to go to infinity, that limit is always 0 regardless of your choice of x. Therefore, the interval of convergence, let's say, for all x, therefore, the interval of convergence is all x. Okay, so, okay, that's an example where the radius of convergence is infinite. Okay, I think this next one is going to be an example of where the radius of convergence is 0. 
Okay, so I'm going to set up the exact same thing. The limit is n approaches infinity of n plus 1 factorial. Okay, there's a hole over here, and I'm running out of room. I shall, let's see. That'd be good. x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 to the 99th power divided by n factorial x to the n. Okay, and I want to take the absolute value of those terms, but it's hole punched, so n to the 99 up here. Okay, and I'm taking that absolute value, and I'm going to need to cancel some stuff off. Okay, all but one of the powers of x n plus 1 and n factorial, you know, we know what to do with that. So I'm left with an n plus 1 in the numerator times x times n over n plus 1 to the 99, if that's how you like to look at it. But either way, are you, I could even distribute this in and say this is... Um, n plus 1 to the 98 on bottom with n to the 99 on top. So it's going to be bigger on top. It's going to go to infinity. I could say this fraction goes to 1. x is going to be whatever it is, but this goes to infinity. So this limit is equal to infinity and is always greater than 1 unless x equals 0. So the only value that's going to, the only value of x that's going to make this power series converge is x equals 0 because if x is equal to 0, then the whole term is 0 for all n, and so I've got 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, and so on, right? And I know what that's going to add up to. That's going to add up to 0, and it would converge. So I know that this is equal to infinity unless x is equal to 0. So the interval of convergence is just x equals 0. Okay, so that would be where the radius of convergence was 0, and there was only one, one value of x at which the power series was converging. Okay. There are no more examples, okay? I'm sure that um, if you need more, we can go and look at the, the free response problems for recent years. It's typically number six on CalBC. Um, they frequently ask about interval and radius convergence. So if you need more practice, go search AP Calculus BC free response and uh, you'll, you'll run into some. Thanks for watching.